Okay, welcome everybody to another episode of the Irish Success Podcast. On the other side, we have Sean Malone. Sean Malone is going to interview me for the first couple of episodes. And then we're going to be in inviting seriously interesting and successful people. And we're going to ask them questions. How did they start? Is there any lessons they would give us? So, Sean Malone, how are you? Doing good. How are you? Not too bad. Not so well, not too bad. Let's get it started. Let's go. So, as always, we have a list of questions. Going to stick to a certain topic. First one, we'll get straight into it. How do you start a business if you're working somewhere full time? That's a great question. And listen, that's how everybody starts their business. They basically working for somebody and they have this idea or they want to do the same what the boss is doing, but they don't know where to start. But I'm going to tell you the way I started and the way a lot of people who I know started as well. So basically, the rule of thumb is that when you start your own business, you're going to have to work a lot. You're going to have to get used to working 15 hours a day. But the thing is that when you're working for somebody and you work eight hours a day, how are you going to switch from that to working 15 to 16 hours a day? So my advice would be to be extremely good. Get extremely good at what you do at the moment on, on, in your current job. That's yeah. what I would say. Hmm. Do overtimes, come back home and learn. Look, people think that when you start building a business, it's all about the actual work where you're going to be building things. But it's also about education. You have to get prepared. You know, the, the, the comfort zone when you're working for somebody is that you don't have to do the invoices. You don't have to do the marketing. You don't have to do the sales. All you're doing is coming in and you're doing the very specific type of a job that you require to yeah. do. But the moment you start working for yourself, you're going to have to become the accountant. You're going to have to become the marketing guy. You're going to have to become the copyright person. You're going to have to be everything for yeah. the first couple of years. So my advice is to prepare yourself for five years of financial hell in combination with learning. <laughs> That's basically what it is. And start doing it when you work for somebody else. And the way I would do it is become seriously great at what you do in your current job. Get good at it. Start your side hustle. So first of all, you need to start making the phone ring. So you set up a business, you set up a website, and you set up a social media. Soon as the phone starts ringing, then you tell your boss, listen, I'm going to do my own thing on the weekends. And when you're doing too much on the weekends and you have to start going into doing your own jobs on Fridays as well, you tell your boss, listen, mister, so I would like to do my job from Monday to Thursday now and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you do your own jobs. And the thing is that most of the bosses will tell you to fake off. Mm. Like, what do you mean you're not coming to work on Friday? Here, yeah. I need you here. Yeah. But that's why I said you have to become seriously good at what you do because if you become extremely valuable person to the company, even if you tell your boss, listen, I'm not coming to work on Fridays, he'll be delighted to have you Monday to Thursday and anyway. Yeah. So you have to work smart and you have to become extremely good you want to keep it yeah and another thing i would say that if you're working somewhere in a let's say a factory or i don't want to any i don't want to use any specific names but if you work for a big company where they treat people like basically unhuman yeah. <laughs> you know numbers yeah uh, run away run because you will not build a career over there you will not be able to deal or negotiate with the management you're basically a number to them so run run and find a job working for somebody in a small family business preferably that's what i would say because then you can build a connection with the boss you can you know you can mm. especially you have to find somebody who is willing to I wouldn't say willing to learn or willing to listen, but some a boss who has an open mind. Yeah. There's nothing work. There's nothing worse than working for a boss who is close-minded. Yeah. You're giving him all the great ideas, also, and yeah. he's ignoring everything. That would burn. That would. Uh, you yeah. basically want to work for somebody like Lucas, <laughs> yeah. somebody who's going to give you a platform. Yeah. To grow. Yeah, well, I, that's exactly. You see all these books behind me. If you're listening to this on a podcast on Spotify, you probably cannot see. But if you're watching this on YouTube or on TikTok, see all these books behind me. <laughs> all of my staff, there is a deal in place that whoever comes into this office, grabs a book, finishes reading it, I will hand them 50 euro. There you go. That's one of the things we help our staff learn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Not that there is a queue to get those books. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Everything's a work in progress. Yeah. So you touched on something there a couple of minutes ago. When you get the phone to ring for you, when, like, how do you do that? What's that process like? Yeah, so look, every business, the most, like people think that in, uh, the most important part of the business is your product or your service. Uh, I would say that the most important part of the business is the sales. Like you, you can have the stupidest product. You can even have a bad product. 
But once the phone keeps ringing and there's a margin to be made on it, you'll make a living. Yeah. The problems will start when the phone stops ringing or if it doesn't start ringing at all. I have so many friends who came up with this greatest idea and they did have seriously good ideas. So they started, they got the equipment or let's say, for example, a friend of mine who started his own clothing line. You know, He came up with his own... Uh, track suits and this and that he bought a lot of equipment he bought the stuff <laughs> and it's sitting in his basement till today because he doesn't know how to sell it so you should first learn how to sell and how to make your phone ring because after that you can work out all the bugs everything else can be fixed yeah you want your phone ring so what i would say if you're still working for somebody let's say you want to start up oh, i don't know let's use let's just use an example you want to you want to Fit skirting boards, <laughs> let's nice. say. So you set up a Facebook page and you say, Fit and skirting boards, Dublin, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you have to learn how to market that thing. You need to learn that if you're using TikTok, you have to use at least five videos a day. You have to post at least five times a day. Yeah. You need to have a website and you need to have a film on YouTube explaining your work. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. So when we're going to price a job, you need to understand that pricing jobs, going to have a look at something, is all about giving people offers that are stupid to refuse. Hmm. You're giving somebody offer offer that is stupid to refuse. So let's say I'm going to your house to quote for something, you know. I already have in my head who my competition is. I already know what they're charging. So if I'm on if I'm talking to the client and I'm gonna ask him what else were you thinking about, he's gonna do well I was also thinking about this and this and then you're gonna say, well, if you do this, this is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen, you know. You just need to know what you're talking about basically, you know. Kinda sounds like you're playing a bit of mental chess. It is exactly like that. And mm. the good salespeople will tell you all about it. Like, look behind me again. Look at all the sales books. You know, like, there have been hundreds of books written on the topic of sales. How to win sales. Like, you know, there's hundreds of topics. We're actually going to record an individual episode about sales. Uh, a couple of them, I would say. You know, but right now, let's just stick to this podcast. Love it. Okay, we'll keep it moving. So, you've got the phone to start ringing. You might have set up your first business. What is involved in managing multiple companies then? How do you do that? Great question. So when you build the business to the level where I'm at, and I'm only st- I am feel like I'm only starting, by the way. Like if anybody looks at what's going on here, they think it's impressive. It's, it's, I feel like I'm only starting. But coming back to your question, uh, the way I do it is that every company that I start, I bring it onto the point where I can f- afford to have a general manager in okay. place. So as soon as I have, you build your own first company, and from the moment of you starting that company, you already have in your head that you're not going to work in that business. You want a general manager who is going to work for that business and manage it. You know, yeah. like, take for example the big Facebook building behind Blanchardstown that's getting built. Well, I haven't seen Zuckerberg with a hard hat walking around over there. You know. Literally. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it. You have to start thinking big. So from the moment you open your business, you have to think, you already have to assume that you will want to put the business on autopilot one day. And this is what I've done. So I've opened my first business, which was the roofing business. And then when I could afford a general manager, I started looking for one and I found one. Uh, I was lucky enough that I uh, that I found the the star the first time. Usually, you have to get through a couple of people. In my opinion, only one in a thousand people is good enough to be a general manager of a business. You need to get, you basically need a superstar. But the problem with hiring those guys is that there's none of them out there. There is none of them because listen, those people don't need you. They don't need your job. They can do it on their own, and they usually do. You just have to keep looking. And how do you find general managers? Good question. I find managers because of my strong social media and then strong, uh, how would I put it into words? I basically show people my vision. So let's take, for example, Henry. Henry, when he started working for me, before he left his previous job, he had a seriously good job. He was a general manager of a big top restaurant in Dublin. He was managing 60 people. Cool. And he was coming out with some great, great money. But when I had a chat with him, I I didn't tell him he's going to get more money. I didn't tell him this. I didn't tell him that. What I told him is I told him my vision. I told him what I'm planning to do. I told him about the empire, this and that. I basically told him, I gave, I dangled a load of carrots in front of him, but the carrots were real. Exactly. Th- this stuff was real. Yeah. 
So he left his previous job. He came to work for me for even less money than he was on, just because I sold him that vision. So you, when you when you uh, when you're hiring a visionary, you need to give him a vision. Exactly. You can't hire a visionary and tell him, right, go over there, do this thing. You know, yeah. that's not gonna work. That is not gonna work whatsoever. You know. Well, that's how you sell to high level people. Yeah, it's you all need about to, vision. You need, you need to become a high level person in order to attract high level people, and that's something I couldn't do for a long, to long time. Mm. You know, I have to say that listening to audiobooks and reading books changed my mindset by 180 degrees. Yeah. I'm a different man than I was 10 years ago. Look, yeah. I uh, by listening to audiobooks and reading books, you change yourself every two weeks, really. You do. I'm not the same man I was two months ago because I've learned so many mistakes during that time. Nice. So when somebody tells me something that I've done five years ago, I'm like, man. <laughs> that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. I mean, that is literally not me. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a different man than I was two weeks ago. Never exactly. Mind five years ago. And that's a good quality because, you know, you have to show self-awareness really at all times. And it's very self-aware of you to say, yeah, I'm changing all the time. You know, my qualities are not going to be the same as they were five years ago. Yeah, there should be. you should be getting better and better. Yeah. People forget about the purpose of life. Like, if you ask somebody, what is the purpose of life? Why the hell are we on this planet? And my answer to that would be very quick. My answer would be self-improvement, sp spiritual growth, and helping others. Yeah. Those three, if you find, if you work your life around those three aspects of life, you will be happy. Yeah. If you continuously grow in your career, you feel important, you grow spiritually, you practice meditation, or you can follow any of the foo-foo religions out yeah. there. But I'd say spirituality is the main one that you sh people should be getting into. So spirituality, continuous growth, and helping others is really, really important. And not helping others to take a picture with them and put it on Instagram. Helping others and not bragging about it is a different level. It's a different vibe altogether. Exactly. exactly. Not looking for... Uh What's external approval yeah. exactly ego. when you see people on instagram or on facebook doing this big helping in the supermarket and there's a big camera crew behind yeah. them this is nothing but an ego boost an ego tickle it's cheap tickle. advertising for their profiles yeah, yeah look uh, i'm not saying that there's something wrong with it look the guy got something for free yeah. in the end but like you know they you, know you, 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 get... you haven't seen mother Teresa helping children in calcutta and there was a big film crew behind her that didn't happen you know exactly so true help comes from within Mm -hmm. So going back to the general managers and how that works, what specific qualities are you looking for in a general manager? It depends what business I'm hiring him for. Okay. So let's say if I'm hiring somebody for the garage in my car business, I was looking for somebody who had experience in cars and has a customer service in sales, basically, yes. you know, because that business doesn't require any general knowledge in mechanics or let's say how to change a turbo in a car. Because yeah. we don't specialize in that line of work. Mm -hmm. The line of work over there is very specific. All I needed was a good salesman with general knowledge in cars but let's say if i was to hire somebody for teaching my sales team how to do sales and stuff like that obviously i'd be looking for a different type of guy so yeah. every business is different i suppose mm. but what i would say just keep an eye out and keep trying people keep trying people you know mm -hmm. um yeah okay deadly next question then what's the most important business skill the most important business skill, oh, oh boy, there's plenty of them. The most important business skill, I would say, I would say that there's two. I would say that there's motivation and there's education. They're the two most important. But if I was to pick one of the two, I would say education. Because you can educate yourself to be motivated, but you can't motivate yourself to be educated. Nice. But those two are super important. Cool. But I would say education, because you can also edu you can educate yourself to be and do anything. Exactly. Like, and motivation doesn't last that yeah, long, really, yeah, does it? Yeah. Like, people forget that skills, skills is excellent. Like, if you look at your phone and you want to do a certain uh, t thing and you download the app, and now you have that app and you can do that thing. Same thing with your brain. You can, you can, you can. Instead of downloading an app, you just have to put the work in and read a fucking book. Down, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> download the programs yourself. Yeah, you download it and you keep it forever. Once you keep using it, you know. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing for a long, long time now. Like if somebody met me now <laughs> and they were my friends, let's say ten years ago, they would be, oh my god, such a change, you know? Because I was the typical loser when I was twenty-two. Yeah, mm. zero ambition smoking weed for a living but look everything can change when you make a decision and, yeah. but the decision needs to be there you need to have a lot of motivation there you know we covered it in the previous episode well motivation then you have to make your plan then you have to stick to your plan and even if it falls through exactly and i think uh we're gonna touch off the uh, topic of setting goals 
which is uh, we're, we're gonna need a full episode for that yeah. because this is big law of attraction and all that stuff. Yeah. It works. It doesn't work the way they say in the book The Secret, but it does work. I f- I think I found a recipe for for law of attraction, and I think it works to a T. Perfect. Okay, deadly. Right, we'll touch on that again. Uh, where and how can I learn about business, and why is it so important? If you want to be successful and have money you have to learn about business and the reason why is that every problem every situation have been solved and somebody wrote about it so before you start a business and start swinging in the dark which it is if you start a business without experience you're literally swinging in the dark you know but because there are business books out there that you can read you can learn or on other people's mistakes yeah which is great you don't have to make them yourself anymore but people still don't do it you know Mm. Hmm. Uh, so what I would say is dedicate 20 minutes every single morning you wake up in the morning and you open a book this is when to do it because if you try to do it in the evening your mind is already full of stuff your mind is already full of the daily issues and when you pick up a book you don't want to your brain will tell you no go back to TikTok and show me some of the funny stuff so what I would say in the morning when you get up force yourself to read for 20 minutes a day look start with 5 minutes Move to seven minutes and then 10 minutes. Exactly. So do that. And then what I would say, second one, audiobooks in the car. This is big. Everybody should listen to audiobooks in the car. You know, in this might sound funny, but every car that I drive, I physically took snips and I cut the aerial in the cars so I don't have a radio. Oh There's God. no option for radio in my cars. <laughs> Even the Ford Mondeo that you've been driving. Really? Yeah? To me, yeah, that doesn't have aerial. Yeah, I cut it off, I cut it out. There's no even an option for listening to the radio. Look, I've nothing against radio and TV. But the problem is that I have never turned on the TV. And I never heard, hmm, Janice and Joseph just have their house paid for. The second kid is on the way. Um, you know, they're working in their jobs. Their f- career is perfect. Everything is going smooth. When I hear something like that on the news, I'll watch it. Exactly. But when I turn on the news and I hear that there was a stabbing in Ballyfermot, I don't want to know. I literally don't want to know. Exactly. Well, they're not trying to help us get ahead, are they? You know. Yeah, look, there's a whole... We could record a couple of episodes about the negativity, negativity in TV and why it's there. Look, we will get to it. This is We're covering the basics in yeah. the first couple of episodes, but there will be some juicy episodes coming in the good, future. Trust good. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, next one. How do I start reading and listening to books? I get distracted easily. Yeah, so this is very common. People get distracted easily when they want to start learning and reading books because of your attention span. So a part of your brain will have a will, so your brain will have a part where it's responsible for focusing on something for more than a couple of minutes. So years ago, people would have attention span even up to like ten seconds. Mm. Then it moved to seven seconds. Yeah. with the social media and now with TikTok and the reels, the attention span of an average person is between two and three seconds. Yeah. So, you know, when you when you want to start, when you start reading a book and you have to look at it for 15 minutes straight, your brain doesn't know what's going on because it's used to this quick scrolling. So you have to you have to remember that you are in charge of your life. You are the you are behind the steering wheel of your brain. So when your brain tells you, no, 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 go back to Facebook, do this, do that. You are like, no, I'm reading this book. This is my life. This is my body. Nobody tells me what to do other than me. Yeah, (laughs) you have to have discipline. Yeah, extreme discipline discipline that's what i would say so that's what i would that's the, that's the answer here okay deadly uh i went to uh, i was chatting with somebody recently who's involved in mental health and she said to me uh, most of the people that i talk to believe that they have adhd because of the fact that they can't focus for so long no this is the adhd was developed by the pharma industry the adhd didn't exist for a long long time so they feed us with the sugary food then we drink all the you know what we drink mm-hmm. you know we eat bad food we drink yeah. then we look at social media we're bombarded with a lot of negative messages yeah. and then the society wonders why do people go crazy exactly <laughs> we're surrounded by instant gratification yeah. yeah look one maybe one day i'll record an episode about what my life looks like from the morning because there it, i tell you in my life there's no negative people in fact i only have three friends that i talk to after work nice. no more when i used to throw a house party years ago there would be 40 people attending but right now i have three people to talk to that's because those three people who hang around with they listen (laughs) they don't watch tv they don't listen to radio and they're all about success exactly you know quality over quantity exactly exactly so that's what i would say yeah okay deadly uh what was the question here again so maybe i'll top it up 
how to start reading and listening to books because I have a low okay. AD or I have a low attention span. Yeah. Yeah. So the way to start is to basically start and focus on it. So, yeah. you know, dedicate yourself, yeah. get a, get a book. And, you know, even when it comes to setting yourself an alarm or a clock in the morning, so you set the clock for six, six o'clock in the morning. So you go wash up your face and then six fifteen or six ten, you read a book for 20 minutes yeah. and you do not quit. You do mm -hmm. not quit. Yeah. You just have to do it. Or look, you 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 can you can get into the business world and the success world without reading books. Look, but like you're gonna have to do it. Yeah, it's gonna be a long road. Yeah, look, you're gonna have to make a lot of mistakes. There's yeah. no reason why you should do it in today's day and age. Look, it's it, look very simple, very simple. So you're buying some expensive equipment. Let's say a CNC machine, right? Mm. Are you gonna read the instruction, Probably. or are you gonna try to learn it on your own mistakes? Yeah. Well, we might hire a guy who knows how to use it, but... You can also hire <laughs> a business coach. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean by that. You talked, uh, I mentioned discipline, and you kind of mentioned extreme discipline. I wanted to talk about Jocko Willink, because this kind of links up to... Who? You know Jocko Willink? No. Navy SEAL, he wrote that book, Extreme Ownership. Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. I started that book, I didn't finish it. Actually, Joe Doyle recommended me that book. Did he, yeah? yeah? yeah. Well, I wanted to touch on it because uh, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. One, oh. one of the times he was on it and he talked about how it's very important to have discipline and when the, when the Navy sent him to college, he had to read some book. It was about 400 pages long. Most of it wasn't really... Uh, relevant, we'll say, to whatever he was doing. It was probably written in a difficult language to read as well because it's from back in the day. Yeah, just, yeah. A, you know, one of the books in his courses. And he said that, you know, whatever he was doing, he just committed in his mind to sit there and read that book cover to cover, obviously not in one day. But he told himself and he made that commitment to say, I'm going to finish reading this book. And he was like, you know, military precision, just reading the book, reading the book, reading the book until it was done. So that's what you need to be doing. If you're saying to yourself, Oh, I can't read a book, or I can't listen to a book, you have to turn around and start telling yourself, yeah. well, I'm actually going to do these things. Yeah, because it's going to help me. Yeah, uh, people forgot, the, the entire society forgot that yeah. we should be doing the hard things. Everybody just wants to do the quick and easy. Exactly. Like if somebody asks me, you know, what is the secret to this? What is the secret to that? There is no fucking secret. You just have to put the work in and work like a fucking horse. Yeah. That's what it is. Exactly. Like people look for shortcuts and all, but they forget that, you know, good people and strong characters are built in tough times. Yeah. I put myself on top of torture every single day on purpose yeah. just because I want to grow. Yeah. The moment you stop growing, this is the moment you're going down. Exactly. The you comfort know? zone is actually the danger zone. Yeah. And look, w one of the reasons why I started this podcast is so I can keep learning. I can keep inviting yeah. new people. Or I'm going to have to do my homework on them. I did it to make my life harder. Yeah, yeah. There is no financial uh, aspect for in. It, there's nothing in it for yeah. me, really. No like, gain. What, what am I uh, going to gain from my inv inviting people here? There's really not a lot in it, you know? Well, we're definitely going to learn a lot, you know? Well, this is one of the reasons why I did it. I yeah. did it to help other people and for me to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Obviously, I'm going to market my own business here at some stage, but, but that's just a bonus. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, cool. So moving on then, we're trying to get people to realize that they can actually read books if they just tell themselves to do it and yeah. work on it. Yeah. I know we did recommendations last week, but will we do a couple of more recommendations just to, of, books? of books? Yeah. Oh. No. Lucas, why don't people believe in themselves? Why don't people believe in themselves? People don't believe in themselves because they watch TV and they listen to radio. Look, this is the this is the downfall of society. If yeah. everybody just stopped watching TV and listening to radio and replaced it with listening to audiobooks and watching, not even reading books, but watching documentaries about their topic. Yeah. Let's, say, let's say somebody is in a certain trade just watching and doing everything about that trade instead of watch, going home and watching, let's say, some stupid show. Yeah, exactly. Distracting. So, so you know, how, how could somebody who, who, who used TV or a radio as a valid source of knowledge for the past 20 years, how could that, per how could that person be ambitious? It doesn't work yeah. that way. Look, I operate with some serious people in the business world right now, you know, mm. and I can guarantee you that none of them come back home and watch TV. Yeah. That just doesn't happen. Yeah. This is only the lowest part of the society that do that. Yeah, exactly. But do you think that the... Uh, Prince Charles come back, comes back home and watches Coronation Street? No. Hardly. Yeah. Hardly. 
well, how uh, <laughs> how do they keep all the uh, peasants at bay? You know, we have to be distracted, and they have to. Yeah. We have to have our bread and circuses. Yeah. So the bottom line here is that if you want to become great, you want to do a lot of things at the time. You basically have to educate yourself, and you have to start small. Yeah. Don't jump into it too heavy, too deep, because you're gonna get pissed off. Yeah. I would say small. Start small, and start with audiobooks. Yeah, F but don't get scared when you find the first audiobook and you don't like the guy's voice or something. You know, what I mean, mm. find another person. Yeah. With the time, you're gonna get, the, you're gonna detach yourself from yeah. the need of liking somebody's voice. Yeah. Like before, years ago, I would put on an audiobook and I would d get uh, annoyed after a few minutes. I'd be like, oh, I don't like his voice. Yeah. But now, at this stage of my life. Uh, at this stage of my life, I do not care what the guy's voice is like in the video or yeah. in the audiobook. I'm absorbing the information. Look, personal growth, reading books and listening to audiobooks should be like a Chinese buffet, okay? Mm. You go into the Chinese buffet and you don't eat everything that's there just because it's there. Yeah. There's a lot of stupid stuff that I don't agree with. I wouldn't yeah. eat an octopus. Okay. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So when you start reading books and you start getting into the personal development, absorb the information that interests you and that resonates with you and that you need. Yeah. Don't be going into some conspiracy theories if this is not what your thing is, yeah. you know, because it's going to distract you as hell. Take also, everything with a grain of salt. Exactly, yeah. And also I would say that in business you need to be learning about the business, spirituality, success, sales, but there is a certain ratio. I think we touched on this the last time. I would say that 80% of the time you should listen and learn about business skills, yeah. success, mindset, and 20% spirituality. You need that in business. Yeah. You need People need spirituality in business, but it, it has to be 80-20. It cannot yeah. be 50-50 because oh, yeah. if it's 50-50, you're going to become that crazy hippie dude Ooh, what's mine yeah, it's yeah, yours yeah, yeah. You know? i'm gonna be juggling in yeah, the, in you're the gonna boardroom be trees in the, in the <laughs> things park <laughs> yeah okay deadly deadly so why is spirituality an important element in developing yourself very good question business? i think that every business owner should get into spirituality look if you start doing meditation even a couple of minutes a day if you even become aware of what's going on out there Mm. You become a better boss. You'll treat people nicely. People will treat you better. You'll be, you, you know, like I operate in my businesses on transparency and honesty. Yeah. And that wouldn't be, be wouldn't be possible without the spirituality aspect of it. Because, you know, I believe in, re in reincarnation. I believe in this and I believe in that. Yeah. And if I wasn't do, if I wasn't going through life with the grain, I would be going against my grain. Yes. So, you know, I live my life by transparency and honesty. And that's thanks to spirituality. Mm. And I think everybody should do it. If In fact, if every everybody did it the world would be a different place yeah there would be no need for lying there would be no need for physical abuse cheating people cheating. out you know yeah yeah if everybody was like that the world would be a better place but the funny thing is you know what the funny thing is that you will never turn on your tv and nobody will tell you to do meditation or uh, to gonna look into spirituality why is that did you ever wonder why is that i'm gonna tell you why the reason why is that there's no money to be made on it <laughs> there's no money in it right exactly. that's why nobody told you this for free yeah you know I, in fact the elites have a lot to lose if you start going into spirituality because guess what you start meditating you start being aware of your surroundings you're gonna stop eating shite food you're gonna stop watching the stupid things on tv you know you're gonna stop consuming that's why the elites don't want it yeah exactly that. and i suppose along with that they wouldn't be able to be selling us uh the prescription drugs they wouldn't be able to sell us the big mags yeah yeah so i watched this documentary recently it was a very controversial one and they said that 80 percent of the medicine in the world is not needed there is no need for it yeah. so the elites or the pharma companies are basically coming up with diseases so they can treat them yeah it's a like, business plan yeah like like a lot of the antidepressants the world does not need antidepressants no. they don't yeah. the reason why people have depression is because they didn't look and try to fix it when the time was right and now they are in a seriously heavy depression and listen there's no other way than to treat it with the exactly. like, uh, with the drugs <laughs> and since a whole lot of people out there are taking antidepressants no no nothing against antidepressants no, nothing here nothing against antidepressants but, all i'm saying is that there shouldn't be any need for them if people yeah. were living the way i'm yeah. saying here a bit of spirituality a bit of education if you go to the doctor and tell him you're not feeling great the first thing he's going to do is throw pills at you 
Yeah, for no, your head. And listen, this is exactly what's happening with a lot of the teenage p- girls and boys. They are sitting on Instagram, they're looking at all these models, and listen, they're saying to themselves, well, I'm not that pretty, I don't have money, I live in this house, she, yeah. she, she, this person is over there, and they're feeling bad for themselves. Yeah. They're feeling extremely bad for themselves, and they have zero self-confidence. Yeah. Even if you go into town and you just look around the place, everybody is just super obsessed with material things. Yeah. Cars, clothes, shoes, jewelry, yeah. hats. Yeah. I was that, I was like that as well for a long time. Funny enough, mm. but uh, last year I kind of woke up to a lot of things and I sold everything that I had. I even sold my motorbike. Would you believe? Deadly. Yeah, sold everything. Put everything into the business. Mm. Yeah. Well, I suppose you have to knuckle down, huh? Try and ten x everything. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly you know that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What motivates you now, after the material things? Yeah, basically, I want to build an empire around me so none of my family and none of my friends around me will be threatened by the fact that they can have no work or no money. Mm. Look, I came from a poor background, you know, so just the fact that I can turn around and say to my mother, ah, listen, man, there's 20 grand, let's fix the roof on the house. Oh, look, dad, you don't have to work anymore. This is what makes me happy. Yeah, 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 deadly. So you might you might think that, uh, you know, Ferrari, you buy a Ferrari, that makes you happy as hell. It does for a week. It does when somebody drives around and look at you all flashy and all, you know. Yeah. But there's no other feeling in the world than going to your mother and saying, listen, ma, guess what? Yeah. You don't have to work anymore. Yeah. How good is that? Yeah. Yeah. Happy days. Um, that's That's a great motivator. Why do you want to open and keep opening so many businesses? Why aren't you just sticking to one? Why don't I just stick to one business? That's a good question. (laughs) And I think that whoever sticks to one source of income, one business in today's day and age is cuckoo. Like, you know, I would feel ashamed if I was like, you know, my job is to support my family, my girlfriend, you know, my kids, yeah. if I, if they come into the world, that's my job to support my kids. Yeah. So let's say if I have a company, let's just, for example, let's just say Facebook marketing. Yeah. There's a lot of companies who are extremely successful right now doing Facebook marketing. They target, they get people leads and all that. Mm. But like, I don't believe that this job, this, this entire business will exist in five years. AI is going to take over and is going to exclude all of those yeah. people who are doing that yeah. so imagine if i build a business and i'm touring let's say sixty thousand euro uh, every month on a uh, facebook advertising and what happens if they come up with a simple ai software that's going to replace this entire industry which will happen this oh, is yeah. just around the corner yeah you know so by sticking to one business you're extremely vulnerable you know like what yeah. happens if your business goes out of business a uh, quick example a friend of mine recently got a letter that they have to discontinue their product because of some bullshit with health and safety mm. or something you know and uh, build the business that he was building for the past 10 years poof gone 10 years yeah down the drain yeah, yeah. and what about businesses like let's say um Let's say not a business, but a job, a truck driver, yeah. you know, like I don't think that in 10 years there will be a um, need for a truck driver, you know, the Tesla semi truck, they're fully anonymous. They, 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 they're autonomous. Not, sorry, autonomous. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Excuse my uh, spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better English than me though, but anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't say so, but go on. Yeah, no, you're right. A lot of jobs are going to become obsolete very soon. Very, very soon. So I'm actually I'm actually following this topic very closely. And uh, Google came out with their own robot, apparently so. And the robot is aware of itself. Yes. Which is scary. Mm-hmm. If the robot is aware of itself, that means it's aware of its surroundings. And yeah. if it's aware of its surroundings, the robot knows that it's humans who are causing the earth. Yeah, exactly. To go tits up. And they're trying to protect themselves, the robots, you know. Yeah, look, people people don't understand the danger with AI because, you know, uh, an average guy, an average Joe looks a week ahead. He only looks till Friday or the weekend and maybe we go on holiday in two months, you know. They forget that there's people who control the world who are looking 20 or 30 years ahead. Even look, further. Look at the Great Reset, Klaus Schwab and the WEF. Yeah. The WEF was found in 1978 or 9 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So, And this is the New World Order that they were talking about. Exactly. And this is this is real thing. You can Google them. They're talking about it openly. You will own nothing and be happy, Yeah, folks. like it's their mo. Like yeah. when I talk to my friends about it and I try to wake them up, they're telling me, oh, this is conspiracy theory. I'm not, this is not. The moon is made of cheese. That's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
Yeah, the moon landing was fake. Yeah. That's also a kind of conspiracy theory because you can't go up there and you can't tell that it was fake. The pictures mm. are fake, by the way. Yeah, the moon land, the pictures from moon landing are fake. Don't get me going. Don't yeah. get me started, Lucas. Oh, We're going to need a separate podcast for this too. <laughs> so that's a conspiracy, but the yeah. WEF is not a conspiracy. No. You know? And people are looking for 20 years ahead. And this is kind of what I'm doing in my businesses. So yeah. that's the reason why in my garage in the roost repairs in Navan, mm -hmm. Navan uh, Underbody Kings. That's why I'm going into electric cars. So we're going to be converting classic cars into electrics. Cool. Yeah, so uh, we bought the first engine there. So we're going to start doing my own cars. I'll work out the bugs on my own stuff. And then we're going to go into the clients. Because I know that if, th it's already been said, that by 2030, there will be no internal combustion engine cars to be sold in yeah. Europe. Yeah. And this is real. Yeah. So what the heck are we going to be working on in five to ten years exactly. if there is not going to be any cars like that? And all the electrics yeah. are built for like you know, uh, aluminium frames and stuff yeah. like that, you know? Well, to your point, in California, in America, in the last two weeks, they came out and said that they're, they're, they're going to ban the sale of electric vehicles past 2030, I think it is. At the same time... Do you mean ban the sale of co internal combustion Excuse engines? me. Yes. yes, exactly. Fossil fuel uh, engines, they're going to ban the sale on those from 30, 2030 onwards. Yeah, that's, that's worldwide. Yeah. Exactly. Along with that, they don't have enough electricity or chargers to support the current amount of, we'll say, electric vehicles, Teslas and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's a terrible problem. Yeah, and then, you know, people need to wake up because if you, let's say you have been building your garage for the past 20 years or you it's been passed on to you by your father, let's yeah. say, you need to put on a thinking hat right now. Yeah. Put on a thinking cap and start thinking, what are you going to be making money on in the future? Literally. Look, because people are, ain't, ain't going to be coming for a gift service. They're not going to be coming for a clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it into a car wash. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to need the IT team yeah. to work on cars in five to ten years. Look, look, people say, oh, it's so far away. But five years is nothing. Like, I remember five years ago, it's just like that. Poof. Yeah. It's true. Time flies. Okay, so should we wrap up for this episode? And we're going to... Yeah. Right, so let's wrap up for the episode. Thank you, Sean Malone. Thank you. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.